Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Bedreddin and in this video we'll learn how to set up a different OctoSpy flash memory in a TouchGFX template. In this first part we'll see how to set up the OctoSpy peripheral in STM32 Cubamax. If we look at page 20 of the STM32H7B Discovery Board User Manual, we see that it has a 512 megabit OctoSpy NOR flash memory. In this video, we'll see what changes need to be done to use a different memory from a different vendor and a different flash size in the TouchGFX application. For example, we'll use the IS25 NOR flash memory from ISSI. The IS25 family comes in two subfamilies. The IS25LX family operating at 3 volt and up to 133 MHz. The IS25WX family operating at 1.8 volt and up to, to 200 MHz. The two families come in 128 MB and 256 megabit flash size. We'll use the IS25LX256 because its operating voltage is op compatible with the STM32H7B discovery board. Besides, this memory comes in BGA package and it's pin-to-pin -pin compatible with the one from Macronex. I will start by launching the GFX Designer version 4.17. And that GFX Designer is a GUI builder that lets you easily build your graphics application. On the left hand side, I'll select examples and select a board setup. In this video, I'll use STM32H7B3 Discovery Kit and then click select. For the example, example I will go with animated image example give a name to my application STM32H7B underscore octospy IS25LX256 and then click create. I have my example ready. I'll generate the code then browse to the files Click on files here on the left hand side. Go up by one level here and then double click on STM32H7B3 IUC file. I have my STM32 Cubamax project open. I'll go to pinout and configuration tab and then to connectivity. And here we see we have two instances of OctoSpy peripherals. So the OctoSpy peripheral is used to interface to OctoSpy or serial flash memory. So if you look at the schematic of the STM32H7B discovery board, we see that the OctoSpy instance one, so here OctoSpy one, is used to interface to the OctoSpy flash memory. I go back to Cubamax and select OctoSpy one. Here in the mode, we have all the modes supported by the OctoSpy peripheral, single spy, dual spy, quad spy, quad spy multiplexer. And here we'll use OctoSpy mode because we have eight data lines. If we go to the schematic, we see that we have eight data lines from IU0 to IU7. And that's why we'll use OctoSpy mode. In the clock, we have either the possibility to connect the clock signal to port 1 clock or port 2 clock. If we go to the schematic, we see that the clock pin is PB2 and then we go to the device datasheet table 9, we see that PB2 pin is or can be mapped to OctoSpy port 1 or P1 clock. So we'll select port 1 Part one clock. Same way for the chip select. If we go back to the schematic, 
we see the chip selected is PG6. We go to PG6, and here we see that PG6 can be mapped to OctoSpy port 1 chip select. And go back to Pubamax and select port 1 chip select. And here we see in the GPIO settings tab under configuration, we see the default pins uh, enabled for the OctoSpy. And we see here for the chip select PB6 is used by default and PF10 is used by default for the clock. So here we need to match the uh, schematic. So the schematic uses PG6 PG6 for the chip select and so we need to type in PG6 and change the default configuration to P, to from PB6 to PG6. So PB6 is again is correct configuration. It's just it doesn't match the schematic. So use PG6 for the chip select and for the clock, same way for the clock. We see for the clock PF10 is used by default. Go back to the schematic. I see that the clock used used in the schematic is PB2. So here I'll change it to PB2. PB2 OctoSpy part 1 clock. I go back to the mode and we enable the data strobe we see here in the schematic that data strobe or DQS signal is used and the pin used for that is PC5. So we'll enable the data strobe for part 1 and the default configuration is PC5 and it matches the schematic. Next we'll do the data lines, part 1 same way, and here we need to make sure it matches the schematic. So we have the data lines, expand this. So if the, for the IU0 we we'll see in the schematic, for the IU0 is PD11, while Cubamax uses PC9. So we'll change change it to PD11. To OctoSpy IU0. Same way for IU1. IU1 the schematic uses PF9 while the Cubamax uses PC10 by default. We'll change it. Here we do a search for PF9 and here it toggles, we change it to OctoSpy IU1. For IU2, IU2 by default Cubamax uses PE2, we'll change it to PF7. Mm. PF7 and OctoSpy IU2. One more data line is the IU3 PF6. So by default, IU3 is mapped to PF6, which matches the schematic. Then we'll enable the data from 7 to 4, the MSB of the data. Same way, we need to make sure that the configuration matches the schematic. Here we check IU4. IU4 by default is PD4, while the schematic uses PC1. We'll change it to PC1. Talk to spy part one IU4. Next IU5. IU5 by default uses PD5. This is the QMX default configuration, while the schematic uses PH3. We'll change it to PH3 uh, OctoSpy part 1 IO5. IO6 PG9 by default, and this matches the schematic. IO7 PG 
40, and this doesn't match the schematic. The schematic uses PD7. So we go here and search field, and we type in PD7. And we change it to OctoSpy port 1, iOS 7. Okay, now one more thing. We need to go to System Core, yeah, GPIO, and then the OctoSpy tab here. And uh, we need to enable the internal pull-up for the data stop signal, so which is PC5. So here in the GPIO pull-up pull-down configuration, we need to enable the internal pull-up for the chip select. We already have an external pull-up, so no need to enable the internal pull-up for the chip select signal. Next, I go back to OctoSpy 1, and then to Parameter Settings. Here, we'll set up the OctoSpy peripheral. So we'll leave the FIFO threshold to 1. We'll keep the dual quad mode disabled because we have one single OctoSpy memory. The memory type, we have either Micron, Micronex, AP memory, or Micronex RAM. So here, the memory type specifies the order of the data in double transfer rate, 8 data bit mode. In Micron mode, the data is organized as D0, and then D1, while in Micronex, it is D1 and D0. If we go to the device data sheet, we see that the data comes out as D0, then D1. So the IS memory is compatible with Micron mode. We can see in the Micronex data sheet that the data comes out as D1, then D0, then D3, and D2. So I go back to IS25 data sheet and then I see it's D0, D1. It's compatible with Micron type. Next, we specify the, de the device size, which is the size of the external flash memory in bytes. And it is calculated as 2 power of n, where n is the device size parameter here in Cubamax. The IS25LX256 is 32 megabytes flash memory. 32 megabytes is 32 megabytes is 200000 hexadecimal value. And we see that bit, bit 25 is set. So 2 power of 25 is 32 megabytes. So here in Cubamax, I set the device size to, to 25. Next, the chip select high time is the minimum number of clock cycles where the chip select must remain high between commands. The IS25LX256 specifies uh, 30 nanoseconds. Here, if we go to page 88, we see here that TSHSL2 is 30 nanoseconds. So we need to divide 30 nanoseconds by the clock period of the OctoSpy. I go back to Cuba Max, and then I start my calculator. So I divide 30 nanoseconds by the clock period of the OctoSpy. The clock period of the OctoSpy is So we have the frequency here to the octopus by 133 MHz, and we need to divide it by the clock prescaler, which is 3. So the clock period is 3 divided by 133 MHz. So we divide 30 nanoseconds by 3, and then we multiply by 133 MHz. So here we have 1.33, we round up to, to the next value, which is 2. So here we set the chip select high time to 2. We'll keep the free running 
clock disabled the clock mode. The clock mode indicates the level taken by the clock between commands when the chip select is high. In page 47, page 47 of the IS 25LX256 data sheet, we see that the memory supports mode 0 or low level and mode 3 which is high level. So our flash memory supports both low and high. We'll select low. We'll keep the wrap size not supported, the clock prescaler to 3, meaning the clock on the bus is 133, as we saw earlier. The octo spy is 133 MHz divided by the prescaler 3 here. So, which gives us octo spy clock of 44.3 MHz. We'll keep the sample shifting to none and we'll enable delay hold quarter cycle, which means we will add a quarter cycle delay on the outputs in DTR communication to match the whole timing. This is recommended when using double transfer rate or DTR mode. I will keep the other parameters to their default value. Now I will generate the code. My code is successfully generated. I'll click on open project. I have my STM32Q by the launcher. Here I need to give a new workspace and click on launch. Thank you for joining me in this video and we hope that you enjoyed learning how to set up the Octus by peripheral in STM32 Cubamax. In the second part of this video, we'll see how to initialize the Octus by flash memory.